when Broadcom hosted its Enabling AI in Infrastructure Investor Meeting, you and I, Pat, were there, and uh, I think we both walked away impressed. Yeah, it was an investor meeting, and there were three other analyst firms there, which is a very uh, tight-knit group. There were no press, no pictures were allowed. I mean, it was it was quite uh, quite the event, and this is really um, a, you know a coming out party for Charlie Kawas, uh, president. He runs all of semiconductors, all 17 business units. And this focus was really on what is Broadcom doing in terms of AI connectivity and an AI uh, accelerator. Um, coming right off the NVIDIA event, right? They, they you know, uh, people wanted to know, hey, what are all these accelerators that Broadcom is, is working on? I learned a lot, you know, I'm not one of these analysts who who says, oh, you know, I know everything. I, I don't. And it was a learning exercise for me. First off, uh, they brought out a, a third design. Uh, all three of them are consumer, <laughs> right? Rumor has it that the first two are Google and Meta. What's the third one? Uh, who knows? These are also not networking. These are not AI ASICs. Sure, it, it, it includes a compute ASIC, but these are full up SOCs without out a CPU, right? It has compute, memory, network IO, storage on there. By the way, the other brain explosion here was <laughs> the, the, the one year from design beginning to, uh, to ramp. And when you think about an ASIC, you're typically looking at a three to four year. So hypothetically, they could crank out a new one every 18 months for a customer. And that is just absolutely absurdly fast. A lot of this comes to them doing this for the last decade. So uh, pretty amazing. I think the second thing was Ethernet versus InfiniBand, right? Connecting GPUs custom accelerators and merchant accelerators. And I got to tell you, if you're a hyperscaler or an enterprise that want to, wants to connect all three types of accelerators, Ethernet is absolutely what you need for scale out. I, I came convinced 10% performance advantage, a 30% reliability advantage, cost advantage, the standards. I mean, it's just a, a crazy. Um, and, and let's not forget uh, Thor 2, not a smart NIC, but um, heavy duty RDMA for a single memory plane. Uh, pretty amazing. I did like the uh, going through and showing how many clusters, uh, Amazon, Oracle, Meta, ByteDance, right? I think, you know, 130,000 uh, AI clusters uh, with, uh, uh, with, with Ethernet. So I came away really just all, all, you know, all in on Ethernet. It, it's not that uh, Fiber Channel um, uh, is is bad. It's just that PCI, sorry, uh, Ethernet is even better. So in the rack, right, Jess Tremblay got up, did a nice uh, discussion on inside the rack. Uh, and essentially that's connecting uh, CPU, GPU, NICs, AI accelerators, and, and storage. And they dominate this market, by the way. You can look at Dell, HPE, Lenovo, Super Micro Systems, and uh, you know PCIe Switch from Broadcom has been the staple uh, of that. And uh, yeah, I think it's. I don't see any reason why that's not going to be uh, in, uh, uh, in in the future. And you know, a little flashback to AMD's AI event was you know PCI Gen Seven uh, Switch. So. PCIe, low latency. Um, again, this company just uh, uh, dominates here. Co-packaged co op optics, right? So instead of having you know 140 transceivers uh, in a system, you have this super duper cool um, uh, CPO co-packaged co optics module. Uh, and you know this has been in discussion forever, but they're actually shipping this now so if you want lower power increased reliability lowest cost per bit cpo uh looks like an amazing option it's almost like a no-brainer i left wondering like what's what am i missing here right like what am i what what, what do i not understand uh, uh uh from this 
And then finally, I'll end this. Um, Surtees is the basis of all analog goodness. And they've got this 200 gig Surtees uh, based on three nanometer that, that you know, bodes well for the future of, of, of Broadcom, uh, quite frankly, and gets in the business of Marvell with PAM4. So great stuff. Woo. Take a breath, buddy. Listen, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make this sort of, I'm going to really try to dumb down my thoughts yeah, here. I, I, and by the way, I meant ethernet versus InfiniBand. Yeah, Sorry. absolutely. I'm, I'm just going to try to, you know, what did I come away with here? You know, I want to do an analogy. We're going to talk about Apple later, but here's my analogy is that we're going to start to see market shift to a normalization in a in a sort of a two space market. And by the way, there's two two space two players, but player one is Nvidia, end to end everything. Player two is everyone else, <laughs> literally the rest of the the ecosystem. It's all the other chip makers, it's other infrastructure providers. It's going to be a, a, a collaboration. This is kind of that open AI, open Ethernet, open all these consortiums. And so, Nvidia is Apple in this case, and InfiniBand, NVLink, the whole build in of chips and, 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 and infrastructure and hardware and connectors and cables. And it's gonna be this totally vertically integrated solution here. And then the other side of it, ethernet is gonna be the open. It's gonna be Google and Android. I mean, this is how I'm looking at this thing, right? And, and the reason I'm saying this is in the end, they're both very viable solutions. And that's really what I came away with. Jensen kind of got on stage and goes, uh, it's not viable. And yeah. we went to this thing and it comes back. It's like, well, it seems viable. I mean, you get at least equal, if not better performance in optimal settings. Um, you actually do it for less uh, money, which is economical, which is important to people. And there's a couple other things I thought was really prudent that they talked about, like the fragility of, in, of InfiniBand. Like they talked about, you know, keeping, um, you know, that InfiniBand kind of has a higher fail rate having those cables sitting and ready at any given point um, versus ethernet, which is a little bit more stable. But the way I kind of walked away from it is Broadcom is gonna be kind of at the center of Android. And so this network backplane and this network plane that's going to have to connect all this, these XPUs or all this compute is gonna be done one of two ways. And we're actually seeing this war playing out, by the way, in other places. We're seeing it play out with the hyperscalers, right? The hyperscalers are playing out right now because some are sort of adopting the all in NVIDIA and reselling it. And others are saying, well, we want to control the network. We're not going to use their connectivity. We've got our own plane. And I think people could figure out who we're talking about. But in the end, I think the market ends up being split. And I think it ends up being much closer to parity. And NVIDIA is going to be really, really big. And by the way, this is not like, this is a multi-trillion dollar ultimate market with hundreds of billions of GPUs and then all the peripherals and the cells. And I think that's how it plays out. Now, a couple of just really quick things with on the, on the overall um, AI story. Look, the semiconductor business, everything about Broadcom has been about VMware, but the semiconductor business is growing healthily. They were able to basically say now that by in 24, 25% of its revenue is AI related. And actually they're accelerating that forecast now to 35%, That's right. about $10 billion. They've got three mega customers now that are planning to work on their XPUs. No one knows who they are. Um, there is some suspicion of who they are. I think it might be a company that is fruit related it could be this new big customer but again no speculation heard nothing this is just my opinion but i want it on the record in case i end up being right about this later